Oh, it's Friday night in the Thade household. So what are we going to do? We're going to overclock a PC. Well, this machine is a AMD 1055T. You can see I've got it stock cooled right now with an old video card in there. It's not cutting it. I need to I need it to be quieter first of all because it's loud as can be. So I'm going to put a Corsair H50 all-in-one sealed water cooling unit in. First thing I want to do is remove the old cooler. Now this should be very easy because it's just this snap on snap off kind of thing. Um, the thing with this particular model I believe I do have to take the motherboard out though. I'm not totally sure about that but I'll check it out in a second. Wow that's really in there. Oh there we go. So now if that's off I should just be able to pull it off. Oh no! Oh my god look at that! It totally pulled the processor out of the socket. Oh crap I hope I didn't bend any pins. Oh no. Well I got it off and uh, I got it back in the socket so I think it's gonna be okay. Wow is that an honest moment of panic. I'm gonna try to wipe some of this grease off though. You can see the fail. I mean it, it's baked on. It doesn't even have the consistency of normal paste. It's like a powder. The Corsair unit has its own paste, so none of them the thing, so we'll just you know wipe this off. Wow, I'm blown away by that. Jeez. So yeah, I've looked at the instructions and uh, that blue surrounding uh, area here, this is going to have to come out and uh, I'm going to have to take everything out and unplug everything and uh, take the motherboard out and mount the other brackets on the back of it and then the other thing on top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out now. This build is kind of a disaster anyway. I'm using a power supply that's too small for the case and I can tell you right now that this case is too small for the Corsair. But I'm going to use it anyway. I don't have any bigger cases lying around um, that, that aren't being used for other things. So, but I can make it fit. I found a screw hole for it. And I think I can do some creative mounting off of the back of the box to make sure that it doesn't fly about the inside of the case. So if you really don't care what the inside looks like, and you know I don't, Fine. See that? That's 8 gig of RAM on this thing. And for a Linux server, that's pretty cool. The board's out, and you can see the old stock backing bracket. We're going to replace that with something that isn't as good, but certainly fits this, this uh, configuration. I want you to make sure that you get the backplate in here correctly and on the right side. So, see, it fits in like that, but they have a place for stickers or for adhesive tabs so you can make sure that, uh, that you use A the right side and B that it stays in place. The old one, you know, it just was screwed in place. I will say that this is uh, this isn't so bad because it does make it easier to screw it into place if it's already being held in place by these adhesive strips. So I'll give Corsair something for that. I've done Corsair um, overclocks before. I had this huge old thing that I ran for years sat on top of the case and it was big and ugly but uh, it sure did work for a while until it didn't. Okay, that's, uh, that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> That ought to be interesting. Let's put the MOBO back on. Well, that was almost too easy. I'm sure I'll pay for it later some other way. <laughs> Always want to be optimistic. Um, I have these other cable, the power cords to plug in here. And the video card back in. This is, uh, is going too well. I mean, aside from the pulling the, ripping the, the uh, CPU out of the socket, which I may have completely destroyed everything doing. Uh, everything else is going well, so 
If it doesn't work at all, you can laugh at me at the end of the video. I promise I'll show it. The funny thing about buying this chip, you know, you could say, oh, oh this chip is $200 and it's Big Brother, the uh, uh, 10, what is it, 90T is $300. Uh, so I could just get this one to overclock it. Well, for this kind of high end water cooling, it's, uh, it's almost the same price as just buying the stock uh, 1090T. So, six and one half doesn't have another. Of course, it was too easy. I forgot the uh, mounting screws underneath the motherboard. So, I have to take the whole thing apart again and do it all over. So, in the nice, if they told you that category, you have to mount these stupid pieces here into this prior to sticking this on the board. Learn, you, know, you can learn from my mistake if you're going to buy this stuff and play with this stuff that you have to stick those little things in first or you get to do it all over again after you've already put the adhesive on. Isn't that great? Oh, that's just wonderful, huh? Make sure it's all in there nice and tight there and then well, at least I have the adhesive in place already for whatever good it's for. I guess it doesn't matter since it's being screwed in anyway. Okay, now we're back in business, right? It wasn't too painful. So it turns out that some of these have, you know, some of these brackets have one hole in them and some of them have two holes in them like that. And apparently, according to this one diagram for the AMDs, it's the one hole ones that you want. Let's hope that's right. It just seems kind of fragile. These crazy looking screws aren't supposed to go all the way in. So, just kind of get them going, I guess, and then we... we make sure the thing is mounted. I think that that's a critical part of this, uh, this process. Well, that didn't work at all. Not even a little bit. Nice if it worked a little bit. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, now we're down to business. You can see the cooler end of this thing. You got the radiator end at this end. You got your um, radiator uh, plug, which I assume there's some kind of circulating motor in here. And then this thing mounts here, and you turn it until it clicks, right? That's the theory anyway. So I guess it would just fit like that, and then should hear some kind of click, I guess, or I don't know. Kind of neat the way that finally fit in there. It's very satisfying to get that in place. Of course, now I've got to jury rig the rest of it to even make it work at all. Okay, now I have a decision to make. I've got this here. I could try to stuff it in the case, or I could just really go crazy and mount it outside the case. I have to think about it. I was able to snake one screw in the back. See how ugly that is? But it's mounted, so I um, just got to fold things down and I'm ready to go. Okay, this ugly mouse is hooked up. You're probably thinking this will never post, and uh, I'm beginning to wonder myself. Let's see. It made a noise. It seems to be starting. It's much quieter than it was. It beeped. It posted. My goodness. Oh, it's practically silent. That's wonderful. I had to overclock the crap out of it. Right now, without doing anything, the current system is running at 30 degrees Celsius. It's 
really quiet. This is a gigabyte board and there's a lot you can do with this. But I'm going for a modest overclock. I'm not going to uh, do anything too crazy. I didn't do my usual research on this. So, um, so I'm kind of flying blind. It'll never performance boost up to that. So why don't we take this off. and then just run it at 3500, 3.6 GHz and see if that'll work. Let's try it. Now the other thing, you know, there's lots of tweaker tools and I'm used to working with them in Windows, but this is a Linux box. And there's your first fail. <laughs> you can expect a lot of that when you're playing around with this stuff. So it undoubtedly did was it reset back into when it was at before. Boot failures, overclocking. So um, go ahead and go into this. Okay, I got it to boot with these settings into Linux at 3.465. It's a very conservative overclock. Uh, but, you know, um, again, the testing for this is going to be kind of difficult. Uh, I could try to take it up higher, uh, but right now I think that what I want to do is uh, look at the temperature. Now, before we had, we had it at 30 degrees, and with this small overclock, it's at 40 degrees Celsius. But I'm going to be running these cores, all six cores, at top near 100% all the time with this thing. So I don't want to go too high. And I think that that's all I'm going to do. Otherwise, clearly, um, there's still some overhead in terms of temperature and voltage. And if I got on the internet and looked at some settings, I could probably get this thing a lot higher, maybe even close to 4. Uh, but but that's not really what I'm trying to do here. What I wanted to do was uh, was get a little more speed and a lot less noise, and I've succeeded in that.